All right, we're today we're going to look at the worst artifacts in Magic the Gathering. And I would love to welcome everyone from Daytona Beach, Florida. I'm here on vacation. You have no idea what I've done to keep the show going. And we'll start the show off with Dark Steel Relic for zero mana. Sounds pretty good already. I mean, if I didn't show you the rest of the card, you might think this card is broken. But in fact, this card is useless. It is an artifact that is indestructible. And that's it. That's all that Dark Steel Relic is. It's it's an indestructible nothing. I don't even know how you use this. What are you supposed to do? Animate this into a creature? What kind of creature is it going to be? It's probably going to be power and toughness equal to its converted mana cost, and it would die anyway. I actually have no idea how we make Dark Steel Relic much of anything at all. All right, we got, and I'd love to hear all your suggestions. We've got the PM with Razor Boomerang. Razor. Razor Boomerang, three generic mana. All right, what do we got here? Artifact equipment, equip creature has unattached Razor Boomerang. Razor Boomerang deals one damage to target creature or player. Return Razor Boomerang to its owner's hand. Equip two, this card does almost nothing. So we pay three, we gotta put on the creature, then we have to tap the creature which is like a pretty much of a waste of an attack. You have to unattach Razor Boomerang. This is like the really early days of equipment. We got, we got to make sure that these things are not broken. If they're broken, the, the, everyone will get angry at us. It's just like, uh, they got to make sure it's not too pushed. You know, they can up the ante over time. But back then they were really bad. And all you got was a single damage. And you still have to pay two more mana to put this thing up, put it back on there. And you got to return it to your hand. Oh my God. Five mana, you get absolutely nowhere with this. This is the worst pinging thing I've ever seen. It's like you throw the boomerang, it doesn't come back, and you have to pay for it to come back. I guess that's how it is. You throw the boomerang, then you have to go after it. You re-equip it. I guess the flavor is there. It's just, uh, just makes it for a pretty bad pretty bad card we've got kyle driver with the super chat the only thing i can't simulate is the super chat sounds but other than that i think i've got the rest of the show online with a lot of a lot of weird workaround hacks good morning are you going to hit a local game store while on vacation i looked up every local game store here unfortunately really unfortunately there is a popper event at a i think it's geek Geek Nation, but it's on Thursday evenings, and my brother comes in uh, to Florida on Thursday, and I won't be able to make it. And then the next Thursday, I go to Vegas, so I'm gonna miss it. But uh, that was the only. I mean, if anyone knows where I can play some modern or popper in Daytona Beach, uh, Florida, let me know, and I'll try to see if I can make it work. Uh, what else? We got Richie here with the Dark Steel Ignit. Dark Steel Ignit. Ingot. Ingot. Been saying this wrong my entire life. Got the dark steel ingot. Uh, three mana, indestructible. Add one mana of any color. It's not that bad though. It's not that bad, Richie. You at least get some mana. It's like one of the worst mana dorks. But when they wipe the board, at least you're gonna keep the you're gonna keep the art artifact. Josh with a tower of boy, tower of boy real. Or, I have no idea what this card is. Find out with the rest of you. We've got here a two mana. So hold on, what's going on here in the picture here? We've got these the little men on some sort of bridge. Built to fall to their doom. Two mana, tap, target creature can't, cannot be blocked by walls until end of turn. Back then, you know, th walls were a big deal. The wall of... Kelp? Is that like a real wall? I'm not sure. To, I'm not too sure. Like there were a lot of. I, I guess back then, you know, walls were a real strategy. If you had to get through those walls, I guess that's what made like Shivan Dragon, Sarah Angel, so powerful, so popular. It it's so good. It it has. They have fire breathing, vigilance, and also they can get over the walls. All the walls beat beat everyone out. We got Brian F here, Black Lotus, because it's only playable in Vintage and Casual. Alright, shout out to Black Lotus. 
being one of the most useless artifacts because it's actually too powerful. Its power was its undoing. Being zero mana sack, three mana got you banned and restricted everywhere. And then even in even in vintage, most people can't play you because you are too expensive. Trip, I, I, so far trip is going so far so good. So far so good. Uh, my cons of Tarkirbok had two Ugin's Nexus. Feels bad. Ugin's reminds me of something. I also opened a lot of Ugin's Nexus. Five mana. If a player would begin an extra turn, that player skips that turn instead. If Ugin's Nexus would be put into a graveyard from the battlefield, instead exile it and take an extra turn after this one. I think this is like a commander card. It's like anti-extra turns. So if you know someone in your play group that likes to play a bunch of extra turn cards, we could slap out the Ugin's Nexus. Surprise! No more extra turns for you. But on the other hand, uh, outside of that environment, this card is complete nonsense. Yeah, this is a super feel-bad card when you open up in Cons of Tark here. Open for that sweet fetch land. A sweet fetchy. And then you fetch out this nonsense. We've got uh, Hedron Crawler by Ghost. The Hedron Crawler. Crawl away. No, I tried to do I tried to do the show while I was in the airport, but unfortunately the customs line was super long and they have all these pictures like, you know, no recording and I don't like no pictures, no flash photography. And I'm assuming streaming the show while being uh, in the customs line was not going to be allowed. Would not have been hilarious. Hadron Crawler, two mana, zero one. Uh, <laughs> add one, uh, gener one colorless to your mana pool. That is a very awkward, one of the worst, I guess, for some weird construct tribal, maybe you'd want this, but I think even in a construct construct tribal deck, you would rather your mana ramp was not a creature. Creatures are vulnerable. And then if it was a creature, you would like it to be more than zero power. The one tough, at one toughness, you might as well make this a mind stone, am I right? Chris Maddox with the super chat. Keening Stone has lost me many games. Has lost you many games in 2012. Keening Stone. You know what? I own... This card is so bad. I own so many of them. Uh, six mana. A5 tap. So we're, we're already invested in 11 mana here, people. Taria player puts the top X cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard, where X is the number of cards in that player's graveyard. There are more efficient versions of this card. I'm sure in limited, it was like great. So I have, oh, it's actually not an unpopular Rise of Eldrazi card at a whole $3. At a whole $3. Keening Stone is, uh, anyway, I don't like it. I, I, and no, no one else likes it. I can't sell the damn thing. Okay, at three dollars, does anyone want my Keening Stones? I got like twenty of them. I played during the Rise of Eldrazi era. I opened a lot of big titans. Actually, I opened a lot of big titans. Uh, what do we got here? Apocalypse Frosty of the Ghostman says Apocalypse Apocalypse Chime is hilariously bad. Apocalypse. Oculus Chime. At two mana, we've got Pay Two Tap Sacrifice Apocalypse Chime to bury all cards from the Homelands expansion. So we got And that wasn't even that wasn't even a, a set worth burying. This, well this now reminds me, this is like City in a Bottle, where City in a Bottle destroyed all cards from Arabian Nights, but actually the lot there's a lot of cards from Arabian Nights worth burying. I guess that was just a theme back then. Do you guys think, should we bring the theme back? Bury all cards from Rise of Rise from the Eldrazi. Bury all cards from uh, Dominaria United. Is that the way to keep the, the formats in check? We have this one catch-all card from a particular set. And it still can be very flavorful. Urza's Wrath. Destroy everything from Dominaria United. Apocalypse Chime. Very you this is actually quite useless. I mean it's worse it's honestly it's worse than Dark Steel Relic. PM says music too loud. Thank you for letting me know. And I you know what? I agree. Uh oh, it resets it every time. All right, we got the music to a good acceptable level. Thank you very much. And what I'm gonna have to do is I'm just gonna remember to 
reset the music volume every single day. I had this down to a science before I left. And then when I got here, nothing works. <laughs> well, now we got something working. All right, we got Dylan with the super chat. Thank you very much. Uh, Epitaph Golem. Epitaph. Epi I can't even spell this thing. Epitaph. And it, you got it out here for me. The Epitaph Golem. Five mana, three five creature. Which is not terrible. Pay to put target card from your graveyard on the bottom of your library. Now, that's not... If you need to tutor for something that keeps going to your graveyard, that's the point of this. But for five mana, and then two additional mana, I don't think so. Get it out of here. This is an absolute garbage card. Simon with the pyramids. Pyramids. I don't even remember what pyramids do. I just know that this is a... It's a very expensive card. Everyone wants to own it. It's like $158. Six mana. Okay, so we're, we're six mana so far. You think... That would be enough, but no, we have to pay two more mana. Two more mana for this poly artifact prevents a land from being destroyed or removes an enchantment from any land. It's like strip mine protection, but the problem is you're going to lose to the strip mine by the time you can even get the pyramids out. This is does not it does not help you where you need the help. You know what I mean? Okay, what else do we've got right here? We've got... Balder with the super chat. Thank you so much, Balder. Berry slash burn. Old cards from MTG 30 anniversary. Hold on. M Berry... Is this a double-sided card? Oh, are you just saying... Oh, you're just making a statement. Such, such card does not exist. I don't think a such card exists. No, nothing. Okay, thank you very much for the super chat, <laughs> Boulder. Uh, Richie with Extruder. The Extruder. I'm learning this with all of you guys. Oh, this is a new one. This is from Mod. This is this is a Modern Horizons two card. What's wrong with this card? Four mana. Oh, they brought Juggernaut back. For four, a 4-3 four, creature with Echo, which makes it useless at that point. Sacrifice an artifact, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. That's not the worst card. Now, I will admit, this will card will see absolutely no play. But the fact that it has sack an artifact for no, ma like, it pay no activation cost, uh, makes it, like, somewhat usable. In fact, you could sacrifice itself. Pay four mana. And then sack itself to its echo cost, and then uh, put a counter on target creature. That's how it works. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, Pendulum of Patterns from Rotom. Pendul pen Pendulum of Patterns. Two mana. When Pendulum of Patterns enters the battlefield, you gain three life. I have a feeling this is the best thing this card is going to do. Pay five, tap it. Pendulum of Patterns draws a card so for the life game players that were looking for a little bit of value in addition to gaining some life. This is what you can do. If you can... Sur no, let's not forget that life game. You know, if you have a life gain deck, ideally the life gain does more than just gain you life. But in this case, it looks like it's just going to gain you life. You have to survive to the fifth turn with your fifth land drop to cash in your Pendulum of Patterns. Easily easily one of the worst artifacts, but also one of the worst life game spells. Brian F. with Mishra's War Machine. Oh, is that the original equipment? Mishra's War Machine. I think this is one of the first... No, not the worst. It's the first vehicles. Vehicles. I think this is one of the first vehicles. Okay, seven mana for a 5-5 five five with banding. Oh, no, it's not the vehicle. During your upkeep, Choose and discard one card from your hand, or Mishra's War Machine deals three damage to you. If Mishra's War Machine deals damage to you in this way, tap it. What? <laughs> okay, so as Bandit, which, by the way, is pretty much a useless mechanic, because you don't know how Banding works, because most people don't. Okay, if you do know how Banding works, you probably played during the Banding era. I didn't, so I don't know how Banding works. But we do have this 5-5 five, five for 7 mana, which is terrible. Even, even back then, that was a pretty bad creature. Uh, during your upkeep, choose and discard one card from your hand. 
It's like, uh, it's, it's what's it called? It's like Mastercore. And then if you don't play, if you don't discard your card, you don't get the effect. You're going to have to tap it. All right, you know what this is. Oops. Fusion Gaming Online. Com. I swear I had this all uh, set up in advance. I just don't have it in advance. I don't, don't have it ready today. And we go here. Today's sponsor, FusionGamingOnline.com. What is the deal of the week this week? Our beautiful deal of the week. Oh, it's the same as... Oh, Brothers War. Get ready for Brothers War. If you want to pre-order your boxes of Brothers War, you can get them at FusionGamingOnline.com. Deal of the week this week, though. Save 15% off all Ice Age and Alliance singles. Get the old stuff like Like of the Dead. Get your... What is it? Uh, thought... Not Thought Scour. Thought something. Thought... Takes your thoughts away. It's really good with Thassa's Oracle. Anyway... This is not very smooth, so I'm going to cut it out right there. Uh, if you want to support the channel, use coupon code Nikachu at checkout for 5% off all your purchases. And we're going to thank Manatraders.com. Here we go. Your one-stop shop to buy all to rent Magic the Gathering cards. On Magic the Gathering Online, any format, pay, play Popper, Legacy, Modern, Standard. Actually, it's really... That hidden hack if you want to play basically any deck in standard and play test it properly you might actually want to choose ma renting cards from mana traders and playing on magic the gathering online mtg arena you can't rent any cards but you can rent them on magic the gathering online to get your edge in standard you can support the channel using my mana traders link in the description below uh, or save 10 percent off your first two months using coupon code nikachu underscore g8m and now back to the terrible awful Artifacts. Back to bad artifacts. I didn't miss any super chats in between here, right? Raid Shadow Legends plug coming soon. Oh yeah, I'm trying. I'm I'm working on it. To be honest, they try to uh, pedal every other game towards me except Raid. Okay, we got Standing Stones by Chen. Remember this card. I have heard of it though, probably because of how so it's so legendarily bad. Three mana. Then we have to pay one mana and tap it. Pay one life. Man, we gotta pay a lot of stuff. We gotta pay the life, we gotta tap and one mana. Add one mana of any color to your mana pool. <gasps> That's not a bad filter land. This ability is played as an interrupt. Okay, back then that must have been terrible because you can only be you can interrupts mean you can only use it in response to something else. But now I'm sure you can just tap it at any time. Effects that prevent or redirect damage may not be used to counter this loss of life. By today's standards, you can only add one mana of any color. But back then it would have been worse because an interrupt was like an instant, but you could only do it in response to something. So like only when something was on the stack. That's why it's called an interrupt. You're interrupting something else. All counter spells back in the day were an interrupt. So that meant that standing stones could only be used, the mana could only be used in response to something else. Terrible. Lion's Eye Diamond, that is busted. I don't have a buzzer sound, so you guys uh, are going to get take, it's going to be be taken easy on this, on this trip. Squeeze toy. My microphone volume, everything is good telling you i should got show you guys my setup it's pretty jank right now pay one tap prevent one damage to any creature yeah it's terrible it's absolutely awful <laughs> we could protect i swear we could protect the whole creature for hot perhaps for one mana or maybe for like two mana you know like things like swift foot boots or something like that richie dubs with didgeridoo that you know what this card is probably a really good spec didgeridoo do. By today's standards, this doesn't do a whole lot. But one day, when they, the Minotaurs come out, when they got big Minotaurs, Pleasant Kenobi will have a new updated version of Minotaur Legacy Tribal. Pay one. Artifact. Then you can pay three. You may put a Minotaur permanent from your hand onto the battlefield. And the price of this card, I think, is like all over the place. It like goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down. Because the thing is, the day that... They, right now, there are no good Minotaurs, basically nothing. But the day that they print good Minotaurs, this card is going to skyrocket because it's going to have some purpose. It's going to be like show and tell for the Minotaurs. But today, it's useless because we have no Minotaurs. Cayman says, Clark's Thumb. 
Clark's thumb. Here we have um this this card was on the show before because we actually there was there's like a flipping coin card and you want to win the flips pay two for a legendary artifact if you would flip a coin that actually shouldn't be legendary by the way because Clark has at least two thumbs and two toes so we should have at least we should at least be allowed to play two of them unless he lost one thumb when he was a kid so if you would lose if you would win sorry if you would flip a coin instead flip two coins and ignore one oh say so it doubles your chances of actually getting something but it's very hard to make this card. I mean, I will admit there are very few cards that will make any use out of this card. Millmaster with the super chat. Happy 30th MTG. I know how banding and rushing river and chains of meth work. Because you were back, you were there around when Millstone was invented. Millmaster, you probably invented the Millstone. Thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate it. Uncle Carl, Aladdin's ring or Aladdin's lamp. It's very funny back then um, in Arabian Nights. They had some. This is an Arabian Nights card, right? Got to We got to go dig, dig deep. Uh, yeah, it was. It was an Arabian Nights card. That's important because back then the card was like really, really good or it was terrible. So for eight mana, you're going to pay eight mana to do four damage to any target. You know, honestly, I would take that in draft. I would snap that up. I don't know what was playable in draft back then, but I imagine that this was at least a card to take. By today's standards, I don't want it. Who cares? Uh, <laughs> it's a Mox Tantalite. Ain't it the truth? Mox Tantalite. The fixed uh, soul, uh, soul ring, yet, right? Fixed soul ring. Uh... So you can tap it, add one mana of any color. Oh no, it's fixed Mox Opal. Sorry, fixed Mox Opal. It's got suspend three. So you have to pay three turn. You have to wait three turns after you've cast this on turn one. So by turn four, you'll have access to one mana of any color. You have access to a, the super Mox. This will be fair because it's turn four. Like who cares at that point? Levy with the super chat. Thanks so much, Shimeric Staff. Staff. Four mana for uh, pay X. Shimeric Staff becomes an XX construct artifact creature until end of turn. Good God. I mean, at least by today's standards, you could pay four mana and just have the X creature on the battlefield. What, what do we have? I um, can't remember. There's that creature that's just X. It's like the successor to this creature. Uh, Stoing, Stone Coil Serpent? Is that what it is? Stone Coil Serpent? Yeah, there we go. And it's even better. It's got Reach Trampler Protection from Multicolor. So uh, so long as this exists, why do we even want this thing? Okay, like, sure, it could scale as the time goes on, but big deal. You're just basically soaking your mana into this artifact over and over again. You know what this was for? Playing around Wrath of God. That's probably what it was for. Never gonna die to Wrath of God. You just animate it and boom, you can attack over and over again. Okay, we got James with the Cursed Rack. Cursed Rack. Never heard of it. Which is a good sign. Which means it's going to fit the show. If I've never heard of it, it must not be good. Okay, Cursed Rack is a 4 mana. As Cursed Rack comes into play, choose an opponent. The chosen player's maximum hand size is 4. But at 4 mana... I imagine at that point of the game, ma maxing your hand size out at four, not a very big deal because you're probably empty handed. You only have two more cards left. Well, you played your, you played a land, you played a card, you played a land, you played another card. At four mana, it's terrible. Shimeric Idol. Hey, how no be hating on the Shimeric Idol. I, um, that was a big card back in the day. I played that in a tier one deck. So pay, it's a three mana artifact. But, so this one is different. You don't, you have to, don't have to tap a whole bunch of mana to activate it. You do have to, however, pay zero, tap all lands you control. It becomes a 3-3 three, three turtle. Turtle going to slow, you know, slow but steady wins the race. And Shimeric Idol won a lot of races. Because that's what I was talking about. 
back then this was a powerhouse because it got around um got around wrath of god at the time which was a very which was a very good card back in the day it was like the control cards dream all every control deck had to have wrath of god they had to print wrath of god like basically every set because it's always got to be some stupid sweeper even by today's standard they always have a sweeper it's just not always wrath of god uh so this was okay back then by today's standards yeah probably not very hot you don't want to be tapping all your lands to create a 3-3 turtle basically prevents your prevents you from interacting with your opponents on their turns hasn't aged well at all it's 19 cents so yes one of the worst artifacts i remember it was playable once though boy tech with the super chat thank you so much for your super chat breaking your super chat virginity and I nominate Serpent Generator. All right, let's go find the ger generator. Serpent Generator. It's weird and it costs way too much. Good enough for me. The Serpent Generator for six mana. Pay for it. Oh, we're 10 mana deep here, people. Tap. Put us 1-1 one, one Snake Artifact Creature Token into play. Okay, the rest of this paragraph better be bonkers. This creature has whenever this creature deals damage to a player, that player gets a poison counter. So, oh my God, it's like it has infect. The play. So if a play and if a player has ten poison counters, they they lose, right? I forgot that in infect is sort of like a really old mechanic. I mean, it was just poison back then, not infect. So how did poison poison work? You like you had to no matter how much you attacked for the the opponent only got one poison. And what made infect powerful is that they got a poison for each power. Is that what put it over the top? I might be just talking out of my butt here, but... Ar... Ar... Arikusu. Arik... Arikusu. By Artifact, do you include equipment? Absolutely, yes. And uh, we looked at Razor Boom Boomerang, but because you super chat, we'll do it again in your honor. Uh, I never saw a card that took so much mana and did so little as R Razor Boomerang. Come... going to come back? You pay the three mana. You have to equip it to the te the creature for two mana. Then you got to tap the creature. It deals one damage to target creature or player. Send it to your face. I mean, that's got to be the ultimate insult when you lose to the Razor Boomerang. I don't even know what it plays around. What was the point of this? Was this like the first equipment? I don't think so. It was World Wake. But back then, they didn't have good things to go get with Stoneforge Mystic. Okay, so Stoneforge Mystic got the equipment. I mean, I guess it got stuff like this. We got to balance out Stoneforge Mystic. It's a tutor. Yeah, Batter Skull and the swords and not, not, none of that stuff existed back then. When Stoneforge Mystic came out, it was garbage. It was like a $1 card that people were just speculating was going to one day be a powerhouse in somewhere. Brian F, to be fair, a lot of these old cards only suck because of power creep. Also, Aladdin's Lamp is busted if you tinker it on, out on turn one. All right, let's go. <laughs> well, yeah, anything can look good if you tinker it out, right? Tinker is is a super banned card. Okay, what's Aladdin's Lamp? Where's the moths that are attracted to the lamp? All right, 10 mana, pay X, tap. Instead of drawing a card from the top of your library... Draw X cards, but choose only one to put into your hand. Shuffle the leftover cards and put them at the bottom of your library. X cannot be zero. I don't even think this is that good, even if you tinker it out. If you tinker, the whole board, the whole table will be like, oh, he's, he's going to, he's doing that. Uh, and then you get Aladdin slam. Like, what is going on here? Why would you even do that? This card doesn't seem that powerful. It's like, uh, it's a weird ponder, right? Instead of drawing a card from the top of your library, draw X cards, but only choose one. Oh, yeah, but only choose choose only one to put into your hand. But you drew the cards. Okay, hold on. What's the oracle text on this? Let's all share it. Let's all look at it together. The next time you would draw a card this turn, instead look at the top X cards of your library. Back then, it looks like you could cheat pretty big time. Yeah, so they errated it to say you look at the top X cards. Put all, all but one of them on the bottom of your library in a random order, then draw a card. Oh, then you have to put it back on top of your library. Wow, they really errated this thing big time. Big errata. Because back then, you would just draw the cards in your hand. Oh, yeah. like um, And then you just take a bunch of bad cards and put them on top, bottom of your library. 
Oh, what else do we have? Um, Cala... Calentares with the meteorite. Meteorite. A5 mana. When meteorite enters the battlefield, it deals two damage to any target. What else does it do? Admin mana of any color. This honestly looks like one of the better cards out of today, <laughs> Today, to be honest. I think from uh, out of all the cards that we've seen, this is it could be worse. But if I look at it, I, if I judge it by itself, five mana to add one mana of any color to your mana pool. That's not going to cut it here. And by two, like, what is it going to kill at that point? Like a mana dork? Does anyone, have, does anyone have a mana dork around the table that I can snipe off with a meteorite? El Tana with the Beast of Burden. Beast of Burden. Uh, six mana. Beast of Burden's power and toughness are each equal to the number of creatures in play. So you gotta put a lot of creatures in play. Otherwise, it's completely useless. I don't like it, though. Obviously. Uh, we've got... Oh, we got a lot of Super Chats now. The Super Chats are coming in. We got Erikusu Lich's Mirror. Get your Super Chats in, people, before the show ends. Lich's Mirror is five mana. If you would lose the game, instead shuffle your hand, your graveyard, and all permanents you own into your library. Then draw seven cards, and your life total becomes 20. That is an interesting card! That is a very interesting card for being a bad card. So you could... You're probably going to lose again anyway because you have no permanence in play. But still, you actually get a chance at a second life. That is a very interesting, terrible card. We've got JM with the Echo Chamber. It sounds like a card that I have a lot. I own a lot of in my jank pile. Uh, or I don't, actually. I don't own this card. Okay, four mana. Then pay an additional four to activate and tap it. Uh, target opponent chooses target creature he or she controls. Put a token creature into play and treat it as a copy of that creature. The token creature is unaffected by summoning sickness this turn. At the end of turn, remove the token creature from the game. Play this ability as a sorcery. That's not too bad. I think this actually has more utility than any other card uh, that we've seen on this list. It's funny when, funny looking at these terrible cards and then realizing you... I've now I've looked at so many bad cards that the, this card actually looks playable. One turn you get to copy the creature. It's like those cards that where you steal the creature. Dylan with the super Colossus of Sardia. <laughs> pay four mana. You have to you have to pay eight mana to copy the creature. Let's not forget how terrible that last card was. Okay, Colossus of Sardia. Nine mana for a 9-9 Trampler, but does it untap during your untap step? You have to pay nine mana to untap. So untap Colossus of Sardia, and you have to do it during your upkeep. You basically have to burn your turn in order to untap your 9-9 creature. This is just a, this is a relic of back in the day when this is an antiquities card. Back then, creatures were just terrible. They had to make sure that they, you were punished. You had to be punished back then. Only punishment. Nothing good. Uh, do we have another super chat here? There we go. Voitech, Helm of Chat Zuck. Helm of. Helm of Chat. Hopefully, this is good enough. How many Helm of Chats are there? I right, got a one man artifact. Pay one tap. Target creature gains a. Banding until end of turn. Those, this is broken, man. The, the the premier mechanic of the of of homelands banding, and I can give it to any creature for one mana. Obviously, the card did not very age very well because banding did not age well at all. Uh, Tom says the impounding. Lot bout, uh, lot bought. If any, infinity counts, it doesn't. But we'll look at it anyway. Didn't think they they would print any bad cards in infinity. Uh, white three generic three four. When the uh, impounding lot bought uh, enters the battlefield, you may say incarcerate. 
Oh, yeah, it has to be in a robot voice. Incarcerate. If you do, exile another target artifact or enchantment until impo impounding lot bot leaves the battlefield. Actually, it looks like a regular card. Why is it? Oh, it's acorn because probably because of the nonsense. <laughs> Judge! My opponent did not say incarcerate in a robot voice. Okay, say, say it to the judge. And then the judge will have to judge if they said it in a robot voice. Oh, we got Brian F with a super chat. Draconian Silex. Draconian Silex. Three mana artifact. Pay to tap. Uh, discard a card at random from your hand to regenerate target creature. Good God. Wait, and back then they weren't even worth regenerating. Just let the thing die. Who cares? I spent nine mana on that stupid, stupid... What was it? What did I spend nine mana on? The, the Colossus of Sardia? I have to pay nine mana at my upkeep? Forget it! Just let it die. I'm not going to invest any more mana in that stupid thing. Trevor Peebles. Good morning, late again. Here's uh, for the coffee fund. Thank you so much. Absolutely got my... Need that money for that coffee fund. Got to keep that coffee flowing. Send it to my veins. Brass man. Thanks so much. Black Lance Geo. Brass man. One mana for one three creature that does not untap during its untap during your untap step. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep. <laughs> what's the what's the point of the untap step if our creatures can't untap during that untap step? At the beginning of your upkeep, you may pay one if you do untap brass mat. Again, we have to keep paying so much mat. It doesn't even do anything. I guess back then for a one three, one three for one mana. Back then, that must have been broken. They can't let that. They can't let that thing live. We've got the uh, Venser Sliver. Thank you very much, Calentares. Um, Venser's Sliver. <laughs> Just five men <laughs> for a three-three creature. Very, very watered down. Glenzy, a tower of uh, Coriel. Uh, the tower of Cor Coriel. Oh, this one. Yeah, the target creature can't block. It can't be blocked by walls until end of turn. We saw that. I agree. That's why I run stasis to get rid of the untap step. Wow, hidden the hidden uh, utility of stasis. Voltaic key to break brass, man. Uh, oh, jeweled, jeweled bird. By today's standards, it's now uh, useless. Jeweled bird for one mana. All right, you got to remove jeweled bird from your deck before playing, if not playing for anti. Uh, draw a card. Uh, sorry, tap draw a card. Put your contribution to the anti into your graveyard and replace it with jewel bird it's banned this is one of those cards banned in every format no more gambling people can't gamble in magic the gathering <laughs> if anyone <laughs> talks to wizards of the coast i could i could grill wizards of the coast on uh gambling it'd be like uh it'd go to something to the effect uh is magic the gathering gambling they'll say no and then explain jewel bird huh checkmate absolute check what is anti why would you print something like that Leveler. That is a great card. No, that's Leveler. We'll go to Leveler, but this is actually a busted combo piece. You guys are nuts. Everyone's talking Leveler. 10-10 for 5 mana. When it enters the battlefield, remove your library from the game. But you gotta play with Thassa's Oracle. So you get your Thassa's Oracle in play, and BAM! You win the game. This is a Thassa's Oracle combo piece. You recognize this card? That's right. That is the you. The, when you look at this card, you feel fear. Let me know in the comment section if you feel some anxiety when you see the sight of Thassa's Oracle. That's right. Le loves the leveler, and this can go in any variation of Thassa's Oracle decks. Bean pot with the hive. The hive. A lot of hive cards. Uh, for five mana. 
<laughs> you then have to pay another five mana winners to activate it. Tap, put a 1 1 insect artifact creature token with flying named Wasp into play. Oh god, that is so bad! This isn't even all that. Oh no, it is sort of old, I guess. It's from 4th edition. Or I don't know what the origin is. How far does this go? Where do you come from? Oh, you're from Alpha! Oh, this is an OG card. I guess back then making tokens was a broken thing. They don't want to go. They didn't want to push tokens too hard. I think this is the only token from Alpha, if I am not mistaken. It's called uh, Wasp. Yeah, fly. Yeah, put a one-one creature token with. It should. Have, it should have death touch. If it's a Wasp, it's from. It's from Alpha. You can get the Hive from MTG30. The Hive was the only token maker in Alpha. They knew it was, they thought it was going to be broken. And to be honest, they're right. They had to balance it out a little bit. But uh, yeah, making tokens is super broken. Uh, but by today's standards, uh, useless. Completely useless. How much? Oh my god, the Alpha version costs $935. I can't imagine paying that much money for this. Does this see play in old school by any chance? Is this a win condition in like the deck or something? All right, what do we got? We got Dylan here with the Mirror of Fates. Thank you so much for the super chat, Dylan. All right, five mana. Tap. Sacrifice Mirror of Fate. Choose up to seven face-up exiled cards you own. Exile all the cards from your library, then put the chosen cards on top of your library. Completely useless. I don't even know how you get to... Oh, no. Oh, I see. Hold on. Seven face-up... But they have to be in exile. So you put so much work to exile the cards. This is a super um, achievement unlocked type of card. But I don't even know what the payoff is once you do that. Like your library becomes the cards that you exiled. Even for people who want to try to make a card good. I don't know how you make this card good. Choose up to seven face up cards. Face up exile cards you own. I get, you know what you could do with this? Again, you could try to make this work with Thassa's Oracle. You have a bunch of face up cards in exile. Or sorry, not a bunch. You have like one. And then you play this and it doesn't, it doesn't cost anything to activate. So you activate it. Then you have like one card on top of your library. Then you Thassa's Oracle. Yeah, so you could in theory do it. But outside of that, it's pretty much use. Oh, Thassa's Oracle choose zero. Oh, I didn't think that. Choose up to. That's right, you could choose zero. When they say up to, you don't have to choose any at all. Interesting. All right, we already... So this was... This card was completely useless a second ago. Now it's broken. Uber Shrimp with the Super Chat. I don't get the hype of Mana Crypt. I think it's... <laughs> I think it's trash. Mana Crypt. Okay, so... um, If you have 20 life... It's still really good, but it can it can kill you. Pay okay, so it's zero. At the beginning of your upkeep, flip a coin. If you lose the flip, mana crypt deals three damage to you. Uh, tap, pay, uh, add two mana. It's soul ring, but it's zero mana. It's a zero mana soul ring. I mean, if you have multiple of these in your hand, I mean, you you've completely broken the game. You can start playing all, all of a sudden. You can start playing Aladdin's ring on turn one. Uh, but there is an outside chance that it will kill you. If you have, if you're playing like 20, if you're playing a 20 life variation of Magic the Gathering, like Cube or Vintage Draft or something like that. Uh, but it is, uh, anyway, I can't really make an argument for how bad it is because I know it's one of the most broken cards in the game. Jester's Cap. If anyone believes that Mana Crypt is trash, you know, support Uber Shrimp's opinion. Uh, whoops. Jester's Cap. Thank you very much for the super chat. Herbert! And we've got pay four mana with the activated ability of two. Tap. Sacrifice gestures cap. Search target player's library for three cards and exile them. Then that player shuffles. Just in case you don't like you don't like win conditions. You don't like that Thassa's Oracle coming into the coming into the mix. Actually, do you know what? This is interesting. You get you hit three cards, not just once. So you can hit all the variations of their combo win conditions. This was definitely made for Commander. It's a Commander card. Outside of that, it's pretty useless, though. Chan Gaming, thank you very much for the super chat. First time chat, and have we done Mirror Gallery? I do not think so. Mirror Gallery.
Mirror gallery, five mana. The legend rule doesn't apply. If you don't play with legends, this is a pretty garbage card. But if you do play with legends, if you want to make copies of your commander, this can be... Com I, I'm pretty sure you can break this. Who thinks this can, this can this card can be broken? I was... I think there's a lot of people that want to play this card because they want multiples of a, a legendary creature. Dan Frazier is an MTG god. I don't know where that came from, but sure. Correct. He, The creator of the Moxon. Someone somewhere says, this is a really good card. They like the Mirror Gallery. Miller ga mirror Gallery art does please me, though. Oh, from Scott Fisher. You got, what is this, Maloku? Oh, and many pictures of Maloku. The Mirror Gallery. It is a Mirror Gallery. <laughs> Two Talarian Academies. Yes, break... <laughs> How do we blur how do we break Talarian Academy? We have to just have mirror gallery in play. Look at a CDH game, you'll never see this. Alright, that's enough proof that mirror gallery is useless. Ice Cauldron is the worst because of the text box. Oh, Ice Cauldron. We've seen this card before. Oh god. Okay, I'm just going to read the oracle text. Uh, X tap, you may exile an online card from your hand. You may cast that card for as long as it remains exiled. Put a charge counter on Ice Cauldron. And note the type and amount of mana spent to pay this activation cost. Activate only if there are no charge counters on the Ice Cauldron. Then you can tap remove a charge counter from Ice Cauldron. Add Ice Cauldron's last noted type and amount of mana. Spend this mana only to cast the last card exiled with Ice Cauldron. I think a lot of people just don't even consider this card because of how much text there is on here. Trevor Peebles, Arcane Spyglass from Dark Steel. It's funny, Dark Steel came with a lot of powerful artifacts, but also a lot of useful, useless ones. Arcane Spyglass. Pay four mana, uh, and then you have to pay an additional two mana tap. Sack of land! last thing I want to sacrifice. Can't we sacrifice some of my artifacts, please? Draw a card and put a charge counter on Arcane Spyglass. Remove three charge counters from Arcane Spyglass. Draw a card. I feel like it's doing a lot of stuff, but I, it's not really anything that I want it to do. I don't know. The, I don't understand the, the flavor of this. I'm like spying on people. I'm watching you. Why do I have to sack my lands, though, to do this? I'm safe watching from my spyglass. Flavor don't make sense. Uh, Otakuruni Apocalypse, Apocalypse Chime. Uh, we already looked at this, but now that I know, now that I look at it, it looks like the Eye of Sauron. Does anyone agree? Pay two, two, then you have to pay another two taps. Sacrifice Apocalypse Time to bury all cards from the Homelands expansion. I want them to bring that mechanic back. I think it, it, would, it would actually see play. They should do that for Horizons. Like, so destroy anything from a Horizon expansion. That would actually be pretty good. Who wants to see car like artifacts that can destroy everything from home from the Horizons expansion? The modern modern legacy players will chime up. Frexian Devourer. Thank you so much for the super chat jam. Frexian Devourer. We know them Frexians are hungry. All right, the Devourer for six mana. We got a, a six mana one one. Are you kidding me? Six mana for a 1-1 one, one creature? Okay, when Frexian Devour's power is 7 or greater, sacrifice it. So there's actually no incentive to make it bigger. Okay, remove the top card of your library from the game. Put X plus 1 plus 1 counters on Frexian Devour, where X is the remove cards convert mana cost. Oh, that's interesting. If Frexian Devour's power is 7 or greater, sack it. They had to tell you twice, just in case you forgot it the first time. <laughs> just remind you you can't have it in play if it's power seven or greater so you have to stack your well this is very awkward you have to like pay six mana brainstorm put six six convert mana cost worth of uh, of yeah mana on top of your library 
No, you have to have five, actually, five. If it's six, it's going to hit, because it's already a one, one. It's going to get plus one, plus one. So you have to have only five and then stop it from there. No more. They didn't have Brainstorm back then. Brainstorm wasn't a card to completely abuse this. Chan Gaming, Urza's Armor. I don't think we did Urza's Armor. Thank you very much for having the, uh, always having a backup. Six mana for an artifact. If a source, if a source would deal damage to you, prevent one of that damage. Raging Goblin stopped in its tracks. All the 1-1s one -ones back then would do nothing. If a source would deal damage. This actually is really good versus 1-1 one -one tokens. You got have infinite 1-1s. One -ones, they do nothing, right? I mean, I'm not playing this card, but uh, by all means, it's actually quite... Uh, I can see some utility here. The Weed Wizard. Have we seen Mana Web? No. This reminds me. I, we got to look at Sabo's Web. I can't remember if that. I remember. I just remember it was like a bulk card back in the day. Mana Web. Three mana. Whenever a land target opponent controls is tap for mana. Tap all lands he or she controls that can produce any mana of, of that land that can produce. What? Okay, hold on. So what's the Oracle text? Whenever a land an opponent controls is tap for mana. Tap all lands. Okay, I understand. Because the thing is, the first one is like, whenever a land target opponent. So when am I supposed to target an opponent with this? But they eroded it to remove the target opponent. So basically, um, if I tap a red, tap all lands that player controls that could produce any mana that land could produce. So I have to tap anything that can add a red. It all gets tapped. Hold on, I'm going to look up Sabo's web. Sabo's. Sabo's web. Is this as bad as I remember it? A2. Sab Web comes to play draw a card. Oh my god, it's broken. All right, it's already better than every card that we've looked at today. Lands with an activated ability that doesn't produce mana don't untap during the controller's untap steps. All right, so it actually like locks down things like Maze of Ith. I think Maze of Ith, Maze of Ith doesn't uh, tap mana. Uh, what else we got? We've got Marl's, Marl's Chanson, uh, Goblin War Wagon. Goblin War Wagon. We saw, or maybe we didn't. No, maybe we didn't. We see, we didn't see this one. Four mana for a three three. Doesn't untap during your untap step. Again, these awful cards. What's the, what's the point of playing with creatures? They don't they don't untap at the beginning of your upkeep. You can pay two if you do untap Goblin War Wagon. Comes down a very long line of terrible, useless creatures that can't get in the red zone. R.I.P. Mana Burn. Oh, yeah, back then. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, if we go back to the Mana Web, it would force people... Tap all lands he or she controls that could produce any mana. Oh, but it doesn't force them to add mana. It doesn't force them to add mana. Look, Waffles! It doesn't lock down lands that don't tap for, for mana. It locks down lands that do things that aren't tap for mana, which is different and much better. Whenever a land target opponent controls is tap for mana, tap all lands he or she controls that can produce any mana of that land. What? I don't know your point, which is different and much better. Are you trying, are you trying to tell us, Waffles, that this card is good? Are you playing mana web in your uh, in your, in your your commander deck? <laughs> Lucky roll. With the super chat, thank you so much. Draco. Do you think even back then this card didn't see any play? They made a virtual successor to this card, though, that sees plenty of play. Uh, Draco costs two less to play for each basic land type among lands you control. But even if you have all ten, all, all five land types, uh, it's uh, you're still paying six mana, which is a little bit too much. Flying, at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice Draco unless you pay ten. What? I don't even remember that, that clause. This cost is reduced by two. Oh, yeah for each basic land type among lands you control. Because you're not going to play this card unless you have 10. Why would you pay 16 mana? Like, the second part makes no sense. Because you you have to have the land types, right? Like, there's no way this is entering play unless you have the land types. I guess it was, like, anti-tinker protection, just in case you tinker this thing out. Because there was tinker back then, but they didn't have big payoffs for tinker, which made it... Well, it's not fair. It was always broken, but... You know, you get the idea. Love Voodoo with Arkham's Sly. One mana. 
for a pay two tap. Attacking creature this turn does does not cause target creature to tap. Okay, so you can give it vigil vigilance. You cannot use this ability if defending player controls no snow covered lands. Okay, this is pretty bad. You know, I heard of bad cards before. So okay, so you cannot use this ability if defending player controls no. So if your opponent controls snow permanence this is like anti snow hate or something like that we get the ability to give our creature vigilance oh it's a sleigh so the sleigh only works if your opponent controls snow covered land see that the flay super flavor win very bad on playability magus of the bargain letting me know that sabo's web is a really good card Tell me about it. Oh, I got—I don't have it on the uh, here. Sabo's web. Mega Bargain shuts down lands like add to deck rogues passage. Even though they tap for mana, they have an ability that doesn't tap for mana as well. Oh, is that all that matters? Lands with an active ability that doesn't produce mat that doesn't produce mana. Oh, so it just counts abilities that don't produce mana. So even if it does produce mana, you you lock it down anyway. So like it would lock down strip mine. Gotcha, gotcha. Sabo's web is great then. Great card. Trevor Peebles with the super chat. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. More coffee for me. Uh, Deleafs Cube. Trevor's like, what? This is useless. Pay one, tap, pay two, tap. If target creature you control attacks and is not blocked, it deals no damage to opponent. But what's the point of attacking with it? Instead, put a cube counter on Deleaf's cube. Pay to remove a cu cube counter to regenerate target creature. That's right. I don't want to kill you. I don't want to deal any damage to you. I want to protect my creatures. The creatures need to be strong and beefy. And <laughs> Yeah, this card is terrible. It's like the it's like the opposite of winning the game. <laughs> Brittany says, uh, "I've heard that proxy black lotuses for nine hundred ninety nine dollars are pretty bad. I don't know though. Wait, we gotta still wait to see what the proxy black lotuses really will be on the secondary market. It probably will be more than a thousand dollars though. It'll be like two or three thousand. Ellie, angel trumpet." Angel Trumpet. There's no limit to how many bad artifacts are in this game. Pay three. Attacking doesn't cause creatures to tap. That's not bad. But then at the beginning, at the end of each player's turn, tap all untapped creatures he or she controls that did not attack this turn. Angel's Trumpet deals one damage to that player for each creature tap this way. That's bad. So you have to attack. So fortune favors the brave, and if you're not brave, they all get tapped and you deal dam damage to yourself. Send in the team! <laughs> Tommy is like, don't you hate on my angel's trumpet. My angels are very brave. Juju Bubble, says Max K. Hey, what's the Juju Bubble all about? A1, cumulative upkeep of one. I don't even have to go further. That's already an awful ability. If you play a card, bury Juju's bubble. Pay two, gain one life. Did they think this would break the game or something? If you just pay two mana and gain one life? Back then, the life gain players were really proud of themselves. Like they had a really high opinion of themselves. Life gain was like one of the one of the, one of the OG strats back then. Gain so much life and you can't they'll never beat me. It's impossible. <laughs> Dude, that's OP. Love Voodoo. Loves the Juju Bubble. Pay one mana. Then you have to pay a mana every single turn. Whenever you play a card, sacrifice Juju Bubble. Yeah, if you play anything, you, you lose it. I don't even know at what point of the game you want to play this card. I guess you're empty-handed. You have nothing else to do. You have a good board state. You play this and just try to race your opponent. Maybe it's good in the red in red sly, so you like send all your burn spells. It's the I guess it's a good sideboard card. It might have seen play in the sideboard. So you empty your hand as a red sly deck. You got all your red creatures in play. They got their red creatures, and you're trying to race. But then you slam the juju bubble, and you start gaining life as much as possible. But it's only one life. Anyway, I'm trying too hard to make this card playable. 
This is easily top five worst cards we've seen today. <laughs> Juju is like the most horrible artifact. Liar's Pendulum by Tommy Siddons. Liar's Pendulum. Oh, did we look at this one? Nope, we didn't. Pay one mana, then pay two. Tap name a card. Target opponent guesses whether a card with that name is in your in your hand. You may reveal your hand. If you do and your opponent guesses wrong, draw a card. That is interesting. I think this is really good. I actually think this is really good. I've never heard of this card. You pay one and it's modern legal. Pay two, name a card. Target opponent guesses whether a card with the name is in your hand. You may reveal a card if you... Oh, so if you say... If I say Black Lotus in my Merfolk deck, they'll say, no, it's not in your hand. And then I would not draw a card. That is very, very interesting. So I have to bluff them with, like... I have to say, like, Silver Gill Adept or something. So it's just 50-50 whether I draw a card or not. I'm, they're either right or they're wrong. Okay, we're going to end the show off with Josh's Angel's Trumpet. Angel's Trumpet. Angel's Trumpet can be good. Like, play Crawl Space. Oh, what's Crawl Space? No more than two creatures can attack you each combat. There we go. There's the combo right there. They can't... No more than two, then all everything is going to get tapped. You're going to deal a bunch of damage to them. Josh is one of those people. It's gonna make one of the gonna make those bad cards good. All right, that's it for Coffin MTG today. Again, hailing from Daytona Beach, Florida. Um, if but the show goes on, no matter what, doesn't matter where I am in the world, I'm gonna keep the show going. Uh, so and we do this Monday to Friday, eight o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. So long as I am not stuck in co customs or up in the air flying. Uh, thank you very much for supporting the channel with the channel memberships and the super chats. Keep the channel going and makes 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 make sure that I do not miss a day of Coffin MTG. But thank you very much for everyone showing up to Coffin MTG because you guys are the show. I'm the host of the show. You guys are the show. I never heard of Angel's Trumpet. I never heard of what was the last weird card that we just saw? Liar's Pendulum. Without you guys, I would have no Coffin MTG. So as usual, keep brewing up the coffees and we'll keep bringing up the magic take care of yourselves and i will see you see you in the next cup